What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the King's Court with me, Vincent Miracle, here for fansided.com, GoldenGateSports.com, HoundSports.com, and of course, StackKingsNation.com. So be sure to go all four of those websites for all your daily Kings news. Now, a ton of things we got to cover tonight on today's episode, guys. Uh, Demarcus Cousins playing phenomenally. The Kings, you know, could they be contenders this year? Oh my goodness. Rudy Gay signs to a three year contract. Ben McMore playing like a possible Spurs player? Who? I'll tell you who in just a few minutes. But let's get on to topic number one. And also, just so everyone knows, we will be doing a giveaway. I'm not going to tell you when, but it will be on this show, on this very episode that you guys are watching right now. So I'm not going to tell you. It could be like right now, this very first second, when we get into topic number one, or it could be topic number two, or it could be at the end of the episode. You just have to wait, and you have to see, and you have to watch this entire episode to find out. Anyways, topic number one is could the Kings become contenders this year? Oh my goodness, so they're fighting for an 8th seed right now. You know, they're in that mix between, you know, OKC, New Orleans, Phoenix. They're in that last type tier team, that 7th AC type tier. And you don't really know what's going to happen. I mean, no one really knows what's going to happen. I think my personal opinion is Phoenix is going to start dropping off. I think teams are starting to figure out who Phoenix is. Excuse me. That They're starting to figure out who Phoenix is and how they're playing and what they're doing. So I think they're going to start dwindling down a little bit. And unlike Phoenix, the Sacramento Kings are what Phoenix was last year. They were that dark horse team. They are that team that no one really understood how they were winning their games with the roster that they had. Now, that's not a knock on Sacramento. I'm just saying you're getting six-man production. I wouldn't say necessarily six-man production, but you're getting a six-man type of production between two players. And they're combining to be at six man. That's Carl Landry and Omri Caspi. They're playing phenomenally right now off the bench for the Kings. And it's awesome to see. Then you also, you know, you have DeMarcus Cousins playing great basketball, arguably the number one best center in the NBA. I, I still consider that going to big man being Anthony Davis. And people will argue with me, well, Anthony Davis is a power forward, DeMarcus Cousins is a center. It doesn't matter. If they play the big man position, if I had to choose between the two, I mean, no offense, I'm choosing Anthony Davis for all you Kings fans who will argue with me about it. But you do. You choose Anthony Davis. You Why? Because he puts up the defensive stats. He gets you steals. He gets you points. He gets you blocks. I mean, he, I mean, he puts up everything. Offensive, defensive. The, the only thing he doesn't do for you is give you three-pointers. And I'm sorry, but he might actually elevate his game there at some point. Especially if you have a player like Ryan Anderson on your team. And the jump shot that he has in that mid-range area is nice. I can see him banging down, you know, corner jumpers like Serge Ibaka. Anyways, back on the top of that at hand. Could the Kings become contenders this year? And I, I seriously don't know the answer yet, but I do love love seeing what I'm watching. And I love that the Kings are in that conversation, in that mix, because they're playing so well. Now, if I had to make a decision today, am I betting on the Kings making it? Like, if you said, Vince, would you bet a million dollars that the Kings, you know, or, you know, would you bet one dollar to a million dollars that the Kings, or would you bet that million dollars to one that the Kings will make the playoffs this year? And I would say no. I wouldn't. I, I couldn't make that bet. Only because I don't think the Kings are at that level yet. Be just, just not because I don't think they're good this year, but mainly because the West is stacked, guys. I mean, the West, the West has so much talent. I mean, you have OKC, who's going to be coming back from injuries. You've got Memphis, Houston. Uh, Houston's a nice team, although they are filled with injuries right now. Patrick Beverly, when he comes back, he'll be a nice point guard for that team. Isaiah Cannon just got injured, but they still have Jason Terry, who we just traded to them. We, as in the Kings, just traded to Houston. I mean... I mean, there's, I mean, the talent out there in the West is just crazy. Dallas is playing phenomenally. San Antonio. I mean, you go down the list, and just the teams that you're naming off right now are, are top level teams. They're not, they're not going to be easy to beat on any given night. Even the Lakers are, for as crappy as a team they are, they're still a team that is a sleeper team. Like I don't think they'll ever make the playoffs, but they're a team that you can see the Kings losing to. And that's the problem. So I, I really don't know how long this run will keep up. I hope the Kings are still in the conversation for an eighth spot at that time. But if I had to make a decision right now, I'm still not sold on the Kings becoming a playoff team. Not sold on it yet, but it doesn't mean that they're not going to have a great season this year. And it doesn't mean anything like that. I just think that they're not at that level to be a playoff play, playoff team yet. All right, guys. So let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think the Kings are making the playoffs this year? What do you What do you guys like the most that you're seeing from a player that was just added this year? Omri Caspi, Darren Collison, Ramon Sessions. I know what you guys are gonna say about Ramon Sessions, but let me know what you guys think about. Leave your comments in the comment section below. And it is time for the giveaway. So to get, you know, and 
to get the answer to the giveaway, you have to tweet me. You can't leave your message in the comment section. You have to tweet it. You have to be the first one to tweet it. So if you're watching this episode, you have to follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter at VM Center, or you can follow the show and the website on Twitter, secondnation.com, on Twitter at SKN Articles. But to answer this question specifically to win this prize, you have to be following me on Twitter at VM Center and answer the question with the hashtag Kings Court. Now, to win this prize, and this prize is actually kind of nice. It's like a really decent nice prize I, I actually like it it's a Doug Chrissy plaque so to win that you guys have to tell me this what what was the question hold on in what year did did Doug Christie end his career in what year did he end it and what were his averages that year so that is what you guys will get you'll get a King's plaque you know the same one that Scott Pollard had the one I did that giveaway and you'll get the Doug Christie one so again what year did Doug Christie retire and what was his complete stat line meaning shots per game field goal percentage three free throw shots per game free throw percentage three pointers made three pointers attempted three point percentage the entire stat line if you guys got to go on NBA.com and fill it all out but find a way to tweet me the main stuff and I, and I don't need all the other stuff just really just field goal percentage free throw percentage three points trying to name out that stat line as best you can you guys tweet it to me at VM Center with the hashtag Kings Court or <clears throat> or TKP, which is the Kings Court podcast. And uh, first one to tweet it wins. So go. Now, second topic of the day is another big thing is the Kings re signed Rudy Gay to a three year contract. And kind of for a deal, too. So it's a three year deal. After the second year, he does have that player option. And. I believe they got him for a very, very fair price. I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head exactly, which sucks because I had it written down and I lost the binder paper. But the Kings signed Rudy Gay, and that was one of the biggest things we talked about during this offseason, guys, is will the Kings be able to re-sign him? They got him to opt into his player option, and now now they actually have him locked in, which is great to see. He's putting up great numbers, and I think a real reason why you're seeing it is because of the camaraderie you're seeing between him and DeMarcus Cousins. And by him, I mean Rudy Gay and DeMarcus Cousins. I mean, Rudy Gay is showing... The complete arsenal. He's passing the ball very well this year. He's grabbing rebounds. He's putting up the points, hitting down three pointers. He's shooting at a very high clip. I believe it's like 48% on the season. The only thing that's low right now is his free throw percentage, but that can be picked up through time throughout the season. Just work on it. Practice makes perfect, especially on free throws. The team in general has the turnovers. That's kind of another big knock I've been hearing about Rudy Gay. But right now, Rudy Gay is playing phenomenally. I mean, he's getting people in the post. That turnaround jumper is amazing right now. I mean, that's been his go-to move is when he gets people in the post and he can do that nice little turnaround jumper. The mid-range shot, you know, it's always going to be there for him. That's the one thing Rudy Gay always does is that mid-range jumper. But what you're seeing now is you're seeing the complete arsenal. Like I said, he's finding people from the block, he, like like a DeMarcus Cousins pass where Cousins gets his back to the basket. And he'll see someone on the other side of the court. You'll see Rudy Gay kind of start doing that as well. You've been seeing him driving to the basket, not being afraid to attack the lane at all times. And it's just nice to see. He's always on the board. He's always on the glass. He's always staying active no matter what. There is one thing that worries me, though, and that is his, his ankles, his knees, the tendonitis that he's getting in his Achilles. I know injuries is a part of the game, and I know he just came back and against San Antonio dropped 23 points, but this Achilles problem has been going on since last year. And it, it'll just be – you want to know, will it be a continuously lingering problem throughout this season? Because if the Kings do want a chance to make this playoff, and I'm completely wrong, and they do get that eight seed, you definitely need Rudy Gay in the playoffs. You can't just put the entire team on DeMarcus Cousins back and just say, go. It's not going to happen like that. You need Rudy Gay. And Rudy Gay, he can do it all. He literally can. I think he's great next to DeMarcus Cousins. But, again, the only thing that worries me, what I'm seeing from, from him in general is, is just his injury on that ankle tendonitis. It's going to make him miss games, and I want to know if it's going to make him miss any more. But other than that, you cannot be mad at him. The points, you know, the way he's doing it, the efficiency that he's doing it at, and now the Kings are winning. So you can't say he's never been on a winning team because he's on a winning team right now, putting up the numbers that he does at a very efficient clip. He's shooting 48% on the season, I believe. Or it's around there, 48 46% on the season, which is awesome. It's awesome numbers to see. Let me know what you guys think. What's your guys' favorite part about Rudy Gay? Is it is it the way that he he's passing the ball this year? Is how efficient, like the the decisions he's making for those shots are awesome. Like he's not taking, he'll take his occasional, but he's not taking as many, mm, un or the unnecessary shots, the sh the very bad selected shots. 
he he's been watching himself on that very very well. And I love seeing one from you know the up and unders, the dunks, everything. The smart decisions that he's making. He's being the second leader. He's being the co-captain to this team. He's doing it very very well. Or as most people would say on ESPN, he's being a great Robin to Demarcus Cousins as Batman. Now, I brought up the fact about Ben McLemore as we move on to topic number three. But before I move on to topic number three, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors. If you're looking for quality clothes at a quality price, be sure to go to the quality shop located in downtown Roseville right there off of Vernon Street. You walk on in, they'll give you a cappuccino. They have great service. They'll help you find the right clothes for the right price. And if you throw my name in there, maybe they'll even give you a discount. So be sure to go visit the quality shop located in downtown Roseville right off of Vernon Street. Now, I, I said this earlier. I said that I think Ben McLemore is turning into a a possible Spurs player right now who's who's actually having a pretty nice season himself. And I'm comparing him right now to Danny Green of the San Antonio Spurs. I mean, the way that he is playing right now, how he's roaming the outside three, the way he's hitting the three at a nice, a very efficient clip, he, he's proving a lot of people that his last year was just his rookie year. Like, he, he's learning to bounce back from it. Now, shooters roll, shooters touch, it's going to be hot cold. You're going to you're gonna go back and forth with him for sure, but what you're seeing is that he's not he's not afraid to attack. He's still attacking the basket, but he's he's getting left open, and because he's moving without the basketball, he's he's still arguably the team's best player without the ball in his hands. He knows how to move without the ball in his hands. He's doing it very well defensively. He's gotten a, a lot better. He's staying in front of players very very well, and just the way he's rebounding the ball and, and just getting on the getting out on the floor. He's very very talented right this season i'm not saying he wasn't talented last year i'm just saying that you're seeing the talent finally come come around you're finally seeing him slow down the game you're finally seeing him see what he needs to do to continue to get better again that three-point shot has always been nice but now he's finally hitting it you know what i mean now he now he's dunking the ball because he's getting it in the spots that he needs it because now his teammate knows where he needs it and it's it's great to see that now. If you if you want me to, because I know many of you guys have asked me, what's the problem with Nick Stauskas? And the only reason why I'm bringing this up is because he's that number two guy that everyone was like, oh, who's gonna win the starting job? And I was a big advocate on it could possibly be Nick Stauskas because of his game. The biggest problem that was with Nick Stauskas right now is the fact that you know he's not being aggressive at all. I mean, I think the most shot attempts he's ever taken in a game was like 11. And he's only done that a few times. He needs to shoot the basketball. That needs to happen. He can shoot the ball. He can dribble. He can do all these things. But if you're not going to be a defensive player, and Nick Stauskas is no defensive player at all, you got to shoot the ball. I mean, you're in. You're on the floor to shoot the basketball. And the entire Kings organization has faith in you to shoot that ball. They're, they're telling you. DeMarcus Cousins even says that after a postgame, says, I mean, he was asked, like, what, what do you think you would tell Nick Stauskas right now well, since he's in this little slump? You would tell him to shoot the ball. He needs to shoot the damn ball. I mean, that's all That's all you can do is to get out of a slump as a shooter. You need to continue to shoot. He has a stroke. You can see it in glimpses when he does make shots. You can tell he does have a stroke. He just needs to start building confidence within himself to make himself better. That's the only thing you can tell him to do is to make himself better is by shooting the basketball. But Ben McMore, like I said, comparison Danny Green, just because Danny Green, the way he's been playing lately is, you know, he's playing off the ball very, very well. He knows his spots where he's good at the three-point line because that's what he's in there for. That's what he's in there to do. He's in there to shoot the ball and play defense and hustle. And I think that's exactly what Ben McMore is doing. He's playing, you know, pretty good defense. I'm not saying he's going to play phenomenal defense, but he's playing pretty good defense. You know, he's getting out on the three-point line. He's getting out on the fast break really, really fast, very, very well. And he knows where to be on the floor, especially when Cousins has the ball. And Cousins has been finding him from all those cross-court passes that I was bringing up earlier very, very well. And it's just it's just amazing to see this team finally becoming a unit, finally becoming a complete, you know, connection. So, uh, it, you know, it's becoming a unit, becoming a team. There's that, there's that saying that people use, what is it, that the clock. Or I can't remember think of it. I mean, if one part goes off on a clock, then everything's off. Well, right now that, that team is working very, very well. And that one piece that needs to start coming together needs to be that backup point guard spot. And I'll get into that right now because we do have fan questions. Now, if you have a question that you want to get on this show, that was a great transition, right? Now, if you have a question that you want to get on the show, you can email your questions to sknarticles at gmail.com. Or you can tweet your questions in to at sknarticles or tweet me your questions at VM Center. So be sure to 
follow us on Twitter. Uh, very, follow us on Twitter as well, or you can email your questions to sknarticles at gmail.com. Now, these questions, guys, I did not actually write your guys' names now, so I just remember the questions. So I'm not going to give you guys that shout-out. Like I said, I would. I apologize for it. Have a little technical difficulties, but like I said, I am going to name off your questions, and I'll be answering them, and you know, I hope you guys know who you are when I do these questions. But the one question was that I was, who should get the backup minutes between Derek Williams and Reggie Evans? Who should be put into the rotation? I think with those two, it just depends on any given night. You know, you can't just say, oh, Derek Williams needs to play because it's Derek Williams. Or, no, Reggie Evans needs to play because he's Reggie Evans. No, you know, you, you put those players in, in certain situations. Like, for example, when you have a backup, and I'm just going to go off New Orleans because I'm just thinking off the top of my head, but your backup is Derek Wood, or your, their, New Orleans' backup is Ryan Anderson or Omar Eshik. I believe they, they start Oshik next to, next to Anthony Davis as a starter. But anyway, let's say he comes off off the bench. You have Anthony Davis as a starter. Well, you kind of want to put you know, Derek Williams in there at some point to guard Ryan Anderson or Rudy Gay on Ryan Anderson. The Kings didn't do that the last time they played in New Orleans. Ryan Anderson went off. I saw that game. Yes, it was bad. Three-pointers were left open. I don't know how that happened. Defensive breakdowns. Anyways, you're going to want to find a way to put a player like Derek Williams on Ryan Anderson. But at the same time, on the flip side of that note, let's say they have Omer Oshik coming in the game. And Omer Oshik is a big body, and he knows how to rebound the basketball. But who also else does know how to rebound the basketball that's on the Kings? That's Reggie Evans, and that's when you want to bring that type of player in. So it really is a game-by-game -game basis with those two. I really don't think you have to – I really just think it's a coin flip between the guys. You don't really have to say this guy needs to be in the rotation or this guy needs to be in the rotation. When you're looking at these two players, these are the guys that are coming in like last in this rotation. They're those guys that get those – few four to five minutes in a game or 10 minutes tops you know what i mean they're not going to be those key contributors every single night they're going to be those players that come in when you need it in that game so there's that next question was who do you think should be the backup point guard ray mccallum or ramon sessions ramon sessions is getting starting time is starting to come up because he needs to start developing or not developing he needs to start producing at a better level than what he's doing. He's not really giving Kings fans much. And I, and I see you guys' comments all the time. Yes, I'm on the Kings app. I see you guys on there. I, so those I do not comment on there, I am on there. I do see you guys all the time. I do read Twitters all the time. And I know you guys are not a big fan of Ramon Sessions right now. And, I mean, I understand why. He's not producing. He's not playing like the player that they thought they were getting. He's missing shots. He's kind of just taking uh, unnecessary shots all the time, driving to the basket, shooting it up, and shooting shots that he knows he's not going to make but yet he wants to try and do it. Defense is lackluster. I mean, he's never been known as a defensive player, but he was supposed to be known to run that second unit. And that second unit, although is not great. I mean, he's still running the second unit, but it's just he's not putting up the numbers. He's not. And I would give Ray McCallum a shot. I think Ray McCallum is that one of those players that he's going to come and he's going to give it his all. And I think the Kings saw that last year when he took over for Isaiah Thomas, and I think they saw it when... Darren Collison went down, and Ray McCallum stepped in, and he, he played minutes. And did, was he putting up big numbers too? No, but what he did was he played in his role. And I think Sessions, what he's starting to do is get out of his. I think he wants to be that go-to scorer or that premier scorer off the bench, which he's not being. I think that those that role as a premier scorer was split into two people. Again, uh, Omri Caspi and Carl Landry have kind of taken on the six-man role as a duo. So they're like three and three, I guess. They're three and three plus add that together that's your six man so if I had to choose I would choose Ray McCallum right now just because I think it's early in the season enough to see and test that out test the waters on that but at the same time the Kings are winning games so there is that saying also of if it ain't broke don't fix it we'll see what happens I would I would personally if it was my decision I would go with Ray I think Ray has shown that he can produce especially in summer league especially with last year against Isaiah Tom when he placed up against Isaiah Thomas in the starting lineup. And, you know, even now, this season, the little glimpse that we got, you know, he, he could be a nice play in there. But it just it just really, really doesn't – you don't know. It's just – again, this is just one of those things where if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's just whatever Coach Malone really wants to do. And I'm kind of trusting him right now as a coach because the Kings are winning. you got to trust what they're doing. What they You have to understand what they're doing. You have to think, yeah. Okay, this can be right. I mean, are you gonna win? Are the Kings gonna win every single game? No. And if you think that they should win every single game, you're crazy. 
that was my daughter screaming because she even thinks you guys are crazy if you guys think the Kings should win every single game when they go into it. Now, do they have a possibility of winning? Yes, but they should not always, in your mind, be, yeah, these guys are going to be the overall winners. That's not what it should be about. But anyways, guys, that's our show for the day. I hope you guys all enjoy it. Again, if you guys want to win the prize, tweet me on Twitter at VM Center. The answer to the question is, what year did Doug Christie retire and what was his stat line? So you guys tweet that all to me with the hashtag the King score or hashtag TKP, the King score podcast. That's what that stands for. So hashtag TKP or hashtag the King score. First one who answer it wins the plaque. Again, follow, follow me on Twitter at VM Center. Go on the website, satkingsnation.com, houndsports.com, fansider.com, goldengatesports.com. Get all your Kings news from all there. And until next time, Kings fans, bye-bye.